Hey, what's up everybody and welcome back to News Dose. It looks like PlayStation wanted to join in on all the fun this week, dropping a lot of news today. We got a nice update for the PlayStation 5 and all the success it's had. They're giving away several free games and these are great games too. And they revealed some independent games today as well. All of which we will cover throughout the video, so make sure to tune in for all of that. Now also, Xbox wasn't quite finished with their Xbox Game Pass announcements, as they had one last big reveal for the month of March. I said it yesterday, but this really might be the best month for Xbox Game Pass as a whole yet, and I'll explain exactly why later in this video. And it even sounds like they have another big game plan for 2021, which could really make the Xbox series into a very enticing console for that holiday period. So we'll talk about that too. Before we move on today though, I posted this in the comments last night, but I just want to encourage everybody here to be respectful in the comments and enjoy the games and platforms that you love. Don't attack each other because you like something different. We talk about all types of games on this channel, and I want everybody to be able to talk about the games that they love in the comments regardless if it's for Xbox, Nintendo, PlayStation, PC, or whatever platform you prefer. It's all about the games first and foremost. We don't need to tear each other down, but rather join together as a game community. That's what this channel's all about. It's all about games on all platforms. Now with that little detour out of the way though, let's jump right into the video. PlayStation Today decided to showcase seven different independent games coming to the PlayStation 4 and the PlayStation 5 throughout the year. Some of these are a little bit more niche, but I am going to leave a link below for you to go check out each individual trailer so you can decide for yourself if you like any of these games or not. A few did stand out to me though, one being Operation Tango which is an asymmetrical spy cooperative game. The way this works is one player plays as the agent while the other plays as a hacker. Both styles of play will be drastically different, but you have to work together to solve complex puzzles. I actually think this sounds really interesting and could be a lot of fun to play with a friend. It will be out sometime this spring. Also, Armature, the studio behind ReCore, revealed their new game, Heart Leads. This will be available for the PlayStation 4 and the PS5 on July 13th, and it's being explained as a surreal narrative adventure where you can change the past. So if you like narrative-driven games, or if you like Armature, this is a game you might want to pay attention to. One of their more exciting announcements, though, was for Disco Elysium The Final Cut. Now, we've known for a while that Disco Elysium was heading to PlayStation with voice acting and extra content, but now we have a definitive release date. It will be out on March 30th. Yeah, you'll be able to play this game at the end of the month, and if you like old school PC RPGs, this is a game that you're gonna want to play. It's actually one of the best RPGs in recent years. Now, it's not a game where combat is necessarily the main focus, though. This is actually more similar to something like Planescape Torment, if you've ever played that game, but that's a good thing. Torment is viewed as an all-time great thanks to its story and narrative, and Disco Elysium falls right into that category. Again, though, go check out the new trailers that was revealed today. You might find something you like. Next up, one big release for the Switch later this year is Zelda Skyward Sword HD, and there's been a lot of discussion on what's been updated in this game. Not everybody seems thrilled about this release, but one aspect of the game that should be greatly improved on is the controls. Of course, they already talked about it having the option to play with traditional style controls. Instead of using a motion controller, you can instead use the analog sticks to direct your sword and how you attack. This is a very welcome addition, and I think more people will enjoy Skyward Sword HD for this reason alone, but fans of motion controls can rejoice as well. Nintendo claims that motion controls will be smoother and more intuitive on the Switch than the original game. Now, I've never been a big fan of motion controls, therefore I was not a fan of the Wiimote or Wii Motion Plus, which this game really pushed hard for the original. Now, I tried Wii Motion Plus for the original Skyward Sword, and I just did not like the design of that controller or how it felt. But maybe it does work much better this time, so for those who do like motion controls, you might really like this option. If anything, I'm happy to see these options, that way everybody can be happy. I'm never against having more options in a game, and for as much controversy that this game has had, I'm really glad to see it come back so more people can try it out and see if they do like it. Now, we also got a small update for Final Fantasy VII Remake. Last month, they announced Final Fantasy VII Remake Intergrade and the Yuffie DLC. I'm actually really excited to see her story and how she plays in this game, but at the same time, there are a lot of fans wondering 
when will we get part two? Well, the director Tetsuya Nomura let it be known that they are now prioritizing part two. He mentioned specifically that they wanted to upgrade part one for the PS5 and sort out the development environment, which meant moving on to developing a sequel would be much smoother. They, however, are not working on any more DLC and all focus is on part two from this point forward. And this is a game that I am personally really excited about. Part one was nothing short of amazing. The characters, the story, the gameplay, the music, and just absolutely everything was so perfect in this game. I know some people complain about them selling it in parts, but truthfully, they expanded this game so much. It's a much more realized game this time with even more character development, and that's one thing that makes Final Fantasy VII so special. The characters, and now they're even more fleshed out than what they were in the original game. Part 1 really feels like a standalone game though to me, and I can't wait to see what they do with Part 2. I still believe this could be a sequel in disguise, but I'm looking forward to hearing more updates on Part 2. Let's talk about PlayStation though, starting off with the PS5 and the success they've had so far. As we talked about earlier this week, the PS5 is now the second fastest selling console in the United States ever, and we're also seeing a surge over in the UK. Now, anytime we talk about sales numbers for the PS5, we also have to talk about the dire stock situation. As we all know, the PS5 is selling out immediately every single time it goes live, and that is a combination of incredibly high demand alongside scalpers. However, once again, we're getting more evidence that real customers are getting their hands on the PS5 rather than just scalpers, and this time it's thanks to that restock over in the UK. For the first time since the launch of the PS5, Spider-Man Miles Morales comes out at the number one spot in the UK with a 36% increase compared to last week, with 90% being sold for the PlayStation 5. What this means is that with the latest restock, real customers got the PlayStation 5. I mean, they're not going to buy a new PS5 and no new games. That's not how this works. When you buy a new console, you buy a new game, and Miles Morales seems to be that go-to game for new customers. I have a bone to pick with some of you though. I mean, I get it, Miles Morales is great and everything, but you all really need to pick up Demon Souls. Now that game is absolutely amazing, so when you're finished with Spider-Man Miles Morales, go check out Demon Souls. That game deserves so much more recognition, so please go check that game out. Now PlayStation also announced 10 new free games starting March 25th. Yeah, you heard that right, they're offering a lot of games completely free of charge. So PlayStation has offered free games like this a few times in the last year as it's an initiative to keep people at home to play games. Just earlier this month they gave away Ratchet and Clank, but they're really going all out this time with 10 different games, and these are good games too. So let's check out all these games that you can play for free. Abzu, Enter the Gungeon, Res Infinite, Subnautica, The Witness, Moss, Astrobot, Thumper, Paper Beast, and the big one, Horizon Zero Dawn, though it's coming April. Like I said, these are actually really good games. Every single game on this list is pretty good. Now, some of these are PSVR titles such as Moss, Astrobot, and Paper Beast, but all very high quality releases, especially Astrobot. I know a lot of people really enjoyed Astro's Playroom, but Astrobot is amazing for PlayStation VR. I actually think it's an even better overall game, so I definitely recommend that one. It's an all-time great 3D platformer in my opinion, and of course if you haven't played Horizon Zero Dawn, definitely pick that one up. I mean, if anything, if you don't have the digital version and you own a physical copy instead, you can at least pick it up for that reason alone. I really like what PlayStation is doing here though. It's a great initiative, and more people can enjoy these wonderful games. Now onto the Xbox news as they continue on with their busy couple of weeks. They have done a great job with spacing out their announcements, that way they're in the news pretty consistently. It's really smart, quite honestly. Last week they revealed some Bethesda games for Xbox Game Pass, and then Monday they announced Outriders as a day one release for Xbox Game Pass. Then yesterday, they announced more Xbox Game Pass games including Octopath Traveler. That was a big surprise, but they had one more announcement, and this one is just as big. EA Play is officially coming to Xbox Game Pass for PC tomorrow, which will include more than 60 games. Yeah, that's right. You will be able to play games like Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, Titanfall 2, Battlefield, and Madden on Xbox Game Pass for PC. I know a lot of subscribers on PC have been waiting for this, and it's finally happening tomorrow on March 18th. 
Now they have a whole video on how to install EA games on Xbox Game Pass for PC, so I'm going to drop a link to that tutorial below. It doesn't seem overly complicated or anything, but because Xbox and EA are partnering together, you do have two different apps to control. You will need access to EA Desktop, which is in beta mode right now. It's a little different, but not bad. I will leave a link to that, but this is huge for Xbox Game Pass on PC. Really, if you look at this month for Xbox Game Pass on both console and PC, it might be the best and most complete month to date. You have big AAA games, day one releases, PC has a good lineup of games, and then you also have EA Play, which has finally come to Xbox Game Pass for PC. It's just been a great overall month for Xbox Game Pass, and this right here is exactly why it is the best deal in gaming. There is one last thing we need to talk about real quick though, and that's Starfield. This is one of the most anticipated upcoming games as it's the first new IP from Bethesda in over 25 years. There's a lot of excitement to see what they can do with a new IP. They are viewed as one of the best RPG developers ever, making games like The Elder Scrolls and Fallout, but we really don't know much else about Starfield other than it's a new IP from Bethesda. Well, that might change soon according to the well-respected Venture Beat journalist, Jeff Grubb. Now, he does have some inside information, and over the last year he has made it a habit of leaking information accurately, I must say, and this time he claims that Microsoft and Bethesda wants to reveal and release Starfield in 2021. However, he later on notes that they want this to happen, but it's not certainly going to happen. So keep that in mind, but what I take from this is that we're going to get a full reveal of this game very soon, as in maybe possibly around E3 or whatever kind of direct they might host if they don't do E3. They did recently say they plan on doing an event this summer, so if they reveal anything, that's probably where I'd expect this to happen. And this could be a huge release for Xbox this holiday if they can somehow get it out in 2021. We know they have Halo Infinite planned for this year, but they need at least one more big game, and Starfield could be that game. With Halo Infinite and Starfield coming in the same year though, and possibly something like Forza Horizon 5, you suddenly have a very enticing lineup of games for that holiday period. That would actually be better than enticing. That's some real system sellers right there. Now, I know there's a lot of speculation on if Starfield's exclusive to Xbox or not, but after what Phil Spencer said last week, I think we can kind of go into this announcement with the expectations of it being an Xbox console exclusive. There's really not much of a debate on that topic anymore, honestly. All I know though is I'm really excited to see what this game is, but let me know in the comments below on if you're excited about Starfield and its official reveal. And onto the poll of the day, I asked you the community on if you would buy a VR headset for the Xbox series if they did indeed announce support. IGN Italy did report yesterday that the Xbox series asked for an update for VR after plugging in their Xbox wireless headset. That was kind of strange, and even though Xbox denied this report as a localization bug, there still is a lot of speculation on this happening sometime in the near future. Regardless, I wanted to know what you all want, and 57% of you said you would buy a VR headset for Xbox. That once again shows fans want this to happen, and I really hope Xbox does add support eventually. I just see no reason not to. Now, I will say for me, I probably wouldn't buy a VR headset for Xbox unless it gets some exclusives. I already own a virtual reality headset for PC, I also have Oculus Quest 2, and I have PlayStation VR, which they do make exclusives for. So if Xbox makes a VR headset that just supports third party, I think that's great and everything, but I myself probably wouldn't get it unless it gets some exclusives. I just want it for the community in general though. I like seeing people enjoy new games, and I think VR is a great platform for games. So even if they just get third party games for it, I think that would be great as more people could try out VR for themselves, and I'd be thrilled for the Xbox community. Anyways though, that's it for this episode, but if you liked the video, don't forget the bell notification and subscribe button for more content just like this. Also, if you'd like to support the channel through Patreon, thank you for making this content possible. Peace out.